Welcome back everyone. This is the State of the Nation. Last week, there was one question that I asked which seems to have battled liberal think tanks and supporters of past protests. My question was pretty simple. I asked how come when Sri Lanka needed just $8 billion to stay afloat in 2022 to avert a full-blown pandemonium crisis, to avert defaulting, to avert payment suspensions, how come the Sri Lankan top-tier business community couldn't pitch in to help find those funds? After all, many small-scale Sri Lankan businesses across the board helped out to put the country back on track. It wasn't sufficient, but they did what they could. Sri Lankans helping Sri Lanka to avert a crisis mode. Isn't that the right thing to do? Now, since our last program aired, I have been wondering about this. We boast that our top tier businesses in the textile, tea, rubber, coconut uh, and other industries are gaining so much profit, especially during the COVID times. We saw headlines like, uh, we've exported 5 billion worth this, 6 billion worth that. And those guys couldn't pitch in to find $8 billion? Don't you think it's a bit fishy as to why the top-notch people, some of whom are on many lists that depicts as the wealthiest companies in South Asia, couldn't help out? Well, Minister Vijayadasa Rajapaksa pointed us in the right direction. Listen in. I don't know Maha Parimana Viaparikyo Nishpadana Karala Pitarata Yavalatino. Habe Yeu the Vi Aurud the Kata dollar billion Hatara Kwanchakar Latino Ratata. E Pilibado Api Mono the Araganati and Piaver. Vartamana Mahabanku Adipatituma Lokuma Viaparico Siadena again, Kandavalatino, Avartame Pilibando. Panasadena I Dilatin. E Dilatina Panasadin Pasa Panasadenagi Varta Nivaradine Sampurnane. Ani thatali sundena tam dilat ne ay denne nette varta denne be e varta dunnot karapu horakang eliyete nawa exchange control acte ka tibuna idda samasya panas tune angka visiyatare exchange control acte ka tibuna ek pala ne karan control the make aho sikara de das dahate aho sikara la mukadda gina lati enne foreign exchange acte ka control le kane management ke tevi tarak acte ka gina. Videshi Ratwal Loli Mudal Nogena Avot Mehe Ganna Puluang Aparada Mehe Vaga Kheema Mehe Panateng Ivaat Karla Tiena Mehe Deshi Vishy Paata Tiena Varad Karapu Varad Da Tamai Mehe Horun Tida Tila Balang Itiya Dem Balana Mehe Pahugiya Vasara Dekha Aragena Balapuama Mehe Genapu Dollar Vali Conversion Rate Teka Rupiah Loli Parivartha Ne Karla Tiena Kiya Da Sita Vishy Tunai Parivartha Ne Karla Tiena Hey Anik Munda Lokko Mehe Randa Vaga Na Noeku Thetun Kiya La Bond Miladi Gano Gela, May Ubatuma Danoa, Te Karmante, Api Te, Apana and Ekarapua, Masia Asua, Kit and Rata Labani, Api Ekat Amudra Yugen in Anni, and I see it Asua, May Pariwat and Evendepe, Abe Apparel Industrika Gatto, Ekis here Panaha Kitra Tibuna, then E. Ukumaka to Karla Samastia with the Gatamakiad, see the visit tonight, Ekanisa, make a Maha Parimana, Java Rankario Tika Vising. Mulu rata ema sampati ke mangkol lakala, merata janata wge le dahadiya khandulu okho meka tu karala, Paul kipe ke sepagan na Paul kipe ke dah sukabihera nevenuve, Peter rata ginungola tempat kerla tiaga ni inna wa. So what's happening here? To make a long story short, many top tier business companies that use Sri Lankan resources and labour to create products to export and earn a hefty buck don't bring back their earnings to Sri Lanka. In other words, they use our resources to make thumping profits and then they go park those profits and revenue in some other nation, denying the Sri Lankan economy its rightful earnings. Don't get me wrong, this is a dodgy subject to talk about. I might even get fired uh, for bringing this up because the corporate mafia is so strong in this country. But the truth is the truth because anything other than the truth is what got Sri Lanka to this sorry state. Now to understand how much money is out there you have to look at several reports indicating how much is funneled into foreign accounts and never credited to the Sri Lankan economy. 
A non-profit called Tax Justice Network looks at individual countries and their tax evasions. In, uh, in addition, they also monitor how big corporates have manipulated the system to stay wealthy and powerful by influencing the government structures. Tax Justice Network has created a tool to track illicit financial flows in and out of various countries around the world. However, their focus on Sri Lanka is what interests me the most. According to their illicit financial flows vulnerability tracker, Sri Lanka loses $77 million every year due to these big corporates abusing tax loopholes. Now just think. To gain $77 million in taxes, how much of money should be out there? If the calculations made by Minister Vijayadasa Rajapaksa are accurate, then Sri Lanka could have lived as a debt-free country. Then all those dreams of us being like Singapore, the US, the UK and whatnot would have come true. When you think about it, before we actually turn to the rest of the world blaming them for this and that, we should look inwardly to see the crooks in our midst. I mean, in 2015, the drive by the Colombo Twitter liberals, who so badly wanted to find Rajapaksa's magic money, if only they were focused on finding who was funneling our hard-earned money overseas by illegal means, at least we would have some dollars in our coffers. I have a hunch. If we dive into finding out those uh, who's responsible, those people that are funneling money overseas, we will see it's the very same Colombo Twitter liberals and their posh posh families. They are the ones who have been doing it all this time and also working hard to point the finger at someone else. Don't get me wrong, there are good companies uh, in this country that are working really hard to keep Sri Lanka afloat. But then again, there are the crooks. So how do they get to do this? Good question. Now, due to the inability of the political establishment to keep a corruption-free administration, these companies claim there are several reasons for them to park their money overseas. They say it is to buy raw materials. For some, it's uh, due to lack of confidence in the local monetary system, and for some, to avoid taxes under varying tax policies and inconsistence of the incentives offered. Again, don't get me wrong. For some companies, these are legitimate concerns that the authorities are not addressing as of now. But it comes to a point where you have to ask, is it fair for the people of this country whose efforts to create a better, profitable nation are denied to them by these top-notch corporates. I honestly don't think it's fair. Let's get uh, more information on this story. For that, I'm now uh, joined by the former chairman of the Bank of Ceylon and former president of the Ceylon Bank Employees Union, Rusirupal Thendakon, who has a vast amount of experience in the banking sector and a clear understanding of the loopholes that resulted in this amount of money not being brought into the country. Mr. Thendakon, uh, good to talk to you on State of the Nation uh, for the very first time. Uh, welcome. Now, the biggest question I have is how come these large-scale corporate entities who utilize Sri Lankan resources from tip to toe, earning billions of dollars, have been parking those earnings away from Sri Lanka and denying the Sri Lankan economy the benefit. Why has this continued to be this way for many years without being checked? Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you for providing this opportunity. Uh, the basic, I think the whole debate started with the revelation made by the in the newspapers about a, a statement made by the GFI GFI the, the global financial intelligence uh, think tank unit operating in Washington which first highlighted the gaps that prevail between the amount of money that to be uh, remitted back to Sri Lanka as proceeds of the exports but then what is unfortunate about it is until it is revealed in this format by the newspapers, by the media and also with the information available to them from international sources, what did we do? 
where did the authorities uh, act on this how was what was their monitoring what was their control on it despite the fact that we had so many exchange control reg regulations the exchange control act and uh, the various other monitoring operations conducted by the central bank of sri lanka the export uh, authority the export agencies all these were silent about it or did they just forget it or allowed it to continue in this format that is what is worrying us actually the amounts involved are very very uh, important in the context of the present crisis that the country is facing it runs into billions finally what i learned was that between 2009 and 17 the shortage in the remittances back into the country as which remains as a gap between the in and out uh, amounts is running to about 36 billion uh, dollars so this is a huge amount if we had access to it i don't think we will be facing this crisis so therefore i think it is a very very vital important topic to be discussed at length and thank you for focusing on this indeed it, it, it really puzzles me as to why the mainstream media is not talking about this now mr thenicon how do these corporates do it what is the mechanism they use to uh, slowly earn from the resources of this country yet deny the fruits of its labor you see the the whole thing emanates from one point that is if they are subject to regulations and rules those regulations and rules should take uh, due notice of what these exporters are doing so if they are left if they are left to themselves to do whatever they want this would naturally happen in any part of the world this is not the only country where we have we show these gaps in the money to be remitted and money that is not remitted but the whole point is these laws have been changing from time to time now if you trace the history in 1977 when we became an open market economy the whole operations that were under the exchange control act and the laws became changed and there were some relaxations and then another thing was uh, the country was made to go under article 8 of the imf the article 8 of the imf st uh, stipulates uh, certain conditions that we have to observe with regard to foreign exchange transactions and they totally refused to permit any kind of conditionalities or restrictions in these transactions so in 1993 we went into this system under the imf and therefore i think that was one of the opening where we relax these regulations so if this whole operation extends back to very uh, far histories or long times then that means this may be the start but afterwards in 2016 uh finance minister ravi karunanayaka brought in an amendment to the act and reintroduced this uh, need to repatriate but to what extent was it controlled and monitored and observed so this is the question that is not answered properly actually what is in our mind is if the exporters can keep the money there they have enough reasons to do that yeah indeed uh, it makes a lot of sense now uh this might not mentioning any names mr fenegon these corporate entities we are talking about are very powerful due to the large sums of money they own i'm sure we have heard many stories where politicians have tried uh, but failed immensely to hold these corporate sector accountable now in your opinion what is the best way to ensure that if it is made in sri lanka then sri lanka needs to enjoy the profit it creates definitely i fully agree with you mahesh because this is a, this is an area where they say that the exporters are performing a national interest task in the national interest but the unfortunate part is you know the the monitoring and the laws that are co controlling those are not effectively implemented and adequately controlled uh, to see that they are observed fully so this re now you see the scams that took place recently the sugar scam the hedging scam which has gone into history nothing more and there are so many and bond scam all these things are, have gone yeah part of the history today but they have taken place with the blessings of 
the and the support of the banking system the system of authorities corrupt politicians and most of the trade in the, the trading in this country largely are uh, somehow other controlled or have a link to corrupt politicians the investment monies have come from them from uh, illegal resources they have access to illegal resources some of the big corporates who are operating today if you trace their background they started very small but they grew big all of a sudden why because they had the blessings of the corrupt politicians and sometimes collaboration of the officials i don't i don't accuse them but it has happened and we have enough evidence to say that they are silent directs towards that uh, thinking to just to justify that thinking absolutely we're relieved at that uh, mr rusri parath and the former chairman of uh, bank of ceylon and former president of the ceylon bank employees union thank you so much for your time uh, let's take a short commercial break on the other side i will uh, dive more into this story and get a response from the government as to why this is happening i'll be joined uh, by justice minister vijay das rajapaksha shortly stick around this is the state of the nation